Hey, what's up, everyone? Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com, and so far we've got a really cool React app going. We were showing multiple products on the screen. Let's pull it up here to see where we've left off. So we've got a few products here that uh, is showing the uh, the price. You can click a button to add to wish list, although it doesn't do anything. And of course, these are dynamically being loaded from a server, an API, in a database. So uh, ideally, when the API changes, our web app changes. Meaning, the cool part is. If you were just building a static website and you wanted to put products on it, you'd have to manually code in all of these prices, a huge list of prices. And every time that you needed to change something, you'd have to go into your code, your HTML, CSS, and your JavaScript, and you'd have to change things around. Well, of course, with React, you don't have to do that. Uh, you do it on the back end on the database. And when those changes happen on the database, they automatically refresh in the web page. And we have thus decoupled the front end from the back end. And that is good, good web design. And that's one of the main reasons why. Uh, I personally don't like PHP, uh, if you've ever heard of that, uh, and why I don't recommend that people use it is because PHP, uh, it's hard to decouple HTML from JavaScript to the back end. A lot of it's all there, just inserting and mingled and mixed, and uh, if you ever have a big, huge PHP website and you're like, we want to switch to Angular or something, you would have to redo the entire entire website, whereas uh, if we're like one day, we don't want to use React, let's use Angular instead, all we have to do is get rid of the front end, and the back end is still perfectly intact and not intertwined with any PHP. Uh, and so I think we've got a really good flow here uh, with our REST API and with our app. And what we want to do now is create a wish list. So what I'm going to do is create a wish list over here on the right-hand side. And the idea is when you click Add to Wish List, it goes onto the wish list as a line item. Okay, and we're just kind of designing this on the go. We'll use some bootstrap. And then, uh, of course, this button would then turn to remove. So you could remove it from the wish list. And basically, we'd have multiple components talking to each other here in our app um, without being connected to each other, without having to rely on each other, which is really cool. Uh, and then the UI updates accordingly. So let's go ahead first and get that UI started for our application. And we know we're going to need a wish list component. So over here in the source folder, I'm going to right click and go to new folder and we're going to create a new folder called wish list. All right. And inside of this wish list folder, we're going to create a new file. This will be wishlist.js and let's do another new file, wishlist.css. And I still create the CSS files even if I don't use them just in the case that I ever do need them. They're already there and ready to go. And so, I'm going to start copying from another component just to make life easier. So we can go into product.js and let's just copy everything here and then go down to our wishlist.js and paste. And then what I can do is just change some names around. So I can change this to wishlist, change this to wishlist, and then change our CSS file to the one that's actually on the disk there. So wishlist, all lowercase there. And of course, this stuff here is going to go. Uh, we don't need it. And so we kind of got a little boilerplate uh, thing set up here. So uh, let's create the UI. So I want to use another card, uh, a bootstrap card. So I guess we could have left the code there, but um, I'd, I'd rather do it by hand here. Equals card. And let's change this to JSX. There we go. And that div. All right. And we got a card and then let's do the card block okay and inside the card block let's put a title and we'll just call this wish list now we're not going to make our wish list actually uh, download from an API uh, we're we're going to just kind of build our own internal wish list. And then uh, in the future, you could actually do that if you wanted to have the wish list post to an API uh, instead of just here locally in the app. But we're going to learn quite a few things here. It's going to be a little bit complex. So uh, you're going to probably want to watch these videos multiple times. All right, and what we're going to do now is create a list group. So this is another bootstrap class. Again, if you need, if you would like to know more about the bootstrap classes that we're using, that's creating all this beautiful UI for us, uh, you can just go to the bootstrap for documentation and the layout, and, uh, and then look at the components, and it'll give you a whole bunch of good stuff there. Okay. So basically, a list group is a group of list items. It's a UL, and then uh, it's specially styled, which is what I want. I want the bootstrap styling, and then what we'll do is we'll create a series of items inside of that wish list. But we don't have that yet. And I think uh, instead of just doing it here 
uh, manually like we did last time with the product we kind of just made um, we, we kind of merged a couple components or at least the app with the product here let's actually create a separate comp a separate component uh, for the list item itself and uh, this is this is good development practices with react so uh, in our source folder we're going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call this product condensed like it's a condensed line item for a product in case we ever wanted to use it anywhere uh, and inside of this we're going to do a new file and we're going to call this product condensed.js and then we'll do one for the CSS file product.condensed.css okay and in the product condense again we're, we're creating a single line item that's what we want it to be so I'll just paste in uh, all this code here again like we did we'll just change some names around product condensed product condensed and product dash condensed and this one's going to be a little different let's get rid of that stuff there and let's change this to JSX since it's not smart enough to figure it out on its own alright so uh, product condensed that looks looking good there and remember we had a UL if you remember the uh, we were working with a UL on the uh, wish list itself and so we probably need these to be list items so li class name is going to be equal to list group item okay and then what we want to do is we want to have a button on the left hand side that allows you to remove it and then it's going to show the name and then it's going to show the price okay so let's create our button first class name is equal to button beat button outline dash danger the outline uh, what it does is it doesn't fill a solid color it feels like uh, invisible color uh, and clear and then the outline then it has a single outline on it so and I think it looks nice for this button here and uh, that's looking good and then what would the title of this be well this would be probably the title that is going to be passed down into it so we can already assume that it's going to come from the props so we're going to say this dot props dot product dot title okay so remember we want we want to show the name of it what's the item and then what we want to do is actually also show the price right so let's put a little uh, pipe symbol there right underneath the backspace key and then the price okay and then we'll do some more JavaScript code here say this dot props dot product dot price now if you're wondering hey where are you getting these from mark remember remember I already told you that props come down from the parent you can always assume that so we're pretending that it's happening even though we haven't written the code for it yet and this is typically how you're gonna write your components you'll start at these lower levels and then uh, you'll, you're, you'll work your way upward even though we started with the wish list itself we could have started with this and then assume the items that are being passed down onto it okay so we're assuming that the the price and the title are gonna be passed down to us here and then we put a little button here and later on we'll have to actually handle the clicking uh, of the button um, but let's get our UI all set up first. Well, I think the next thing is to actually get our wish list showing inside of our app. So let's go to our app.js and we need to import that wish list, right? So what we can do, I almost feel like what we should do is, you know, probably say something like this components and then services, you know, kind of break these up here. Um, just leave those up there default imports or whatever import and the, it's a wish list right so wish list from and we're gonna say dot dot slash wish list slash wish list I believe that's correct wish list folder yep yep um, let me make sure I exported the wish list I may not have or we may have just copied it. I just want to double check so okay we definitely did export it so we're good there so uh, we've uh, We've got our wish list imported here in our app. Where are we? Here we go. So our wish list is imported. And where do we want to place it? Well, we got this product. Uh, let me change this to JSX so it's not so ugly. Right now we've got this product list, okay, inside of our container um, app main. And I think what I actually want to do is also make this container fluid. I'd I want this to be a full screen app. The container actually comes in from the edges, but the container fluid uh, goes to full screen. And I think I think it looks better. So we got our row, okay, and then 
we're gonna have to change some things around here because right now the product list is encompassing the whole screen, the whole width of the screen. But instead what we want is we want, you know, a portion of it uh, to be covered with the products and the far right side to be covered with the uh, with the wish list. So let's do a little bootstrap magic. Div class name is equal to call dash sm dash eight. So let's say that the wish list takes about eight columns, which is fine. So I'm just going to command x this here and paste it here. And then let's do another column. Class name equals call dash sm dash four, which will give us you know the twelve. And inside of here is where we'll put that wish list. So wish list like so and then uh, it'll actually it'll show uh, the wish list itself and I think we do have a list of products here yes we do so this dot state that product so we might as well pass down the products to the wish list because we know um, that the wish list is going to need access to it hmm you know actually on second thoughts let's not do we're gonna hold off on that let's let's just leave the wish list as it is uh, so we can just get it on the screen first before we start writing any more code. Okay, so column SM4 wish list. Okay, let's see if our code is actually compiling. It looks like we have no problems here, as far as I can see. So let's go to our web page, wherever it has run off to. It seems to like to run off on us here. There we go. Okay, cool. So, ah. Stop it. So we got a wish list here. Um, there's some problems. You know, our um, these are too big now. I think we should resize these so they actually fit on the screen. So the idea is we have three I three items here and then the wish list. So let's fix that. Let's make that look mo better. Let's take a look at our product that CSS. Okay. Let's change this to max width. I'll give it a max width so it doesn't get too big. All right. And then uh, the image the max height, let's say 10. Maybe that'll give us some more space. Let's take a look at our web page here. Yeah, so still still not quite enough here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look and see what we need to do to fix it. What I like to do is go to uh, inspect element. Okay. So I can kind of see what's going on. So here's the container. This one's taking up 8. Okay. That's taking up eight. This is taking up four. And so you would think they'd be able to fit in there, but they're not for some reason. So let's take a, a further look at our product code. Or rather, um, we can look at our app and then our product. So we're loading the products here. Okay, see how we're giving these uh, products um, each a column of four? Um, let's go ahead and do three each and see if that makes them a little bit smaller. Okay, let me pull this open here. It's just not quite there yet. Let's try two. So that's breaking it. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to rethink how we're doing our CSS here a little bit. We're just experimenting. This is a very common thing that I do when I'm building these apps, is I experiment with the different column size. You have to kind of figure out do I change the column sizes? Do I mess with the CSS? Uh, columns, of course, are bootstrap. Uh, and then you're, you might have your own CSS that's interfering with the columns. Let me change this back to four. You know, I think actually we're missing something here. Our product list. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in bootstrap, you always have column, row, column, row. Oh, look at this. This is, this is row and then column and then columns here because the product list is uh, is giving us um, these each have a column there and so we actually need to have a row here first and then uh, it should all work out div class name equals row there we go column row column row column row let's see if that fixes our problem refresh the page there we go okay cool so we've got this wish list here and I I'm not worrying about like these UIs looking, you know, not being the same size, images being stretched. That's stuff that you could fix on your own time with CSS. And uh, what, what the cool thing is, we've got our wish list over here, but it's not showing any products. And so the last thing I want to do is just have it show some fake products so I can make sure that it's working. Uh, so what we need to do 
is go to our code inside of our, let's see, uh, it would be our wish list. Okay, and what we probably need to do is show a list of those items, right? So inside of our wish list, show a list of those uh, condensed products. So let's go ahead and import that component now. So import product condensed from product condensed slash product condensed. It's a little wordy, but uh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's, being more descriptive is better than not being descriptive, like instead of calling it PC, which no one would understand. Okay, so what we wanna do is something similar like we did with the products in the app is where we have a function that creates a list. So inside of our component here, let's go ahead and create a function and we're gonna call this create wish list, okay? And we'll take no parameters. And while we're here, let's go ahead and just create our constructor, which we know we'll need. Remember, it always takes props from the, the component above it, and then super props, which is calling the, the super implementation of it, or it's going into React and it's calling its constructor to make sure that uh, is where it needs to be. And then we'll just go ahead and bind. So bind, bind functions, and we'll say this.create wish list equals this.create wish list dot bind this. It's always good to, to do these when you remember it because later on you're like, why is it not working? And you maybe forgot to do the bind, okay? So again, something similar here. Let's go ahead and say const list equals this dot state dot wish list. This dot state dot wish list. Let's make it like that with a camel casing dot map. Okay, pass in the product, just the condensed product, right? And uh, yeah, it doesn't like, our JSX does not like it when we don't put the curly braces in here, but we need to do it this way. And so we're gonna say product condensed, condensed, yep. Yeah. And we're gonna pass down some props. So we're gonna pass down the product of the current iteration. And the key is going to be the product dot underscore ID. Okay. And that looks good there and then let's oh my goodness it is really struggling with these uh, curly braces here return and then we're going to return that list so what's happening here well for every okay so for every item that's in the wish list okay that's in the state here let's go ahead and create a product for it now we don't have any wish list items in the state and later on and I don't want to pass so what we don't want to do is we don't want to pass down the wish list from the app maybe you were thinking well Maybe we should put a wish list, the data in our main app file and, and trickle it down. But you're not really supposed to do that with React. You want to keep everything as modularized as possible because the more that things are linked, like if we had linked code there, you know, our app really becomes, doesn't become reusable. Our wish list does not become reusable because it depends on the app. And so in a future video soon, we're, we're going to actually be building a data model or a data service that can manage that for us. And so we don't want to pass that stuff down. Uh, we're building components and they need to be self-contained more or less, or at least rely on an external data source that's not another component. And so it's relying on the state for the product and the, it's using a product ID for the key. So let's just, let's just uh, have some fun here. And what we'll do is we'll say this.state equals, okay. And we're going to, let's see for, so this.state yeah, we're going to say our wish list is going to be equal to an array, okay? And it's an array of objects. And we'll just go ahead and say title, okay? And I know this looks a little bit ugly here, but we're putting test data. And remember how I said uh, I like to run test data first because it uh, lets me see how my UI looks. So the title, we're just going to call this, you know, Bologna killer, I don't know, it's just whatever comes to my mind. Price is going to be 23, oops, price is gonna be 23.99, and the ID is gonna be, we'll just put some random number there for now, okay? So that's one item, and let's go ahead and just copy this two more times. We'll put three items in here. We wanna see three products on the screen, just make sure that our UI does not look terribly ugly, and 
Okay, so we got a comma there, and we just need one more comma here. And let's call this Fu Man Chu. And this is going to be 454. And let's just change some letters here. And then this one will be Pipe Dream. And we'll make this $100. And we'll just change this. Okay. So all we've done here is we've set the state. Okay. We've set the state for our wish list with some temporary data. So ideally what happens is um, down here, we'll call the create wish list, and then it will actually uh, generate the proper objects here. Create wish list. Okay. And I'm not sure if we did everything we need to, but let's take a look. Oops. So, oh, cool. So. It's working. Uh, it's kind of broken. Uh, it's doing the wrong thing, actually. What I want to do is make a box here with an X in it uh, and not put it, the whole thing inside of a box. So I think we wrote, um, we need to rewrite some of our code for our uh, condensed product. But that's okay. We're making good progress here. Okay, so what did we do here? We made a list group item. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not what we wanted to do. We want to put this inside of a paragraph of some kind uh, and then. And I also I want to bold the price so it just stands out differently from the title. So let's uh, how do we want to do this? Let's bold it right here. And we'll just put that inside, like so. Okay. So our problem is it's not looking as pretty as we would like. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit ugly. I think we can fix it though fairly fairly easily. So let's let's see. We got a list. And we've got a group item. So, oh, that's the problem right there. Look at that. I forgot my dash. I did a space. Let's give that a shot. Okay, there we go. That's exact. That's looking much better. Okay, and we probably want to set some a margin to the right so these aren't touching uh, on these buttons here, which shouldn't be. That should be just fine. So let's do that. So let's go to our CSS file. So we want to do it on. What do we want to do? We want to do it on the A. So let's give this a name here, actually. We're going to say, um, we'll, say we'll call it PC Condensed. Okay, we'll give it a class name. I'll just copy this here. We'll go to the CSS, put a dot there, and we want the A. There we go. And we want to say margin dash right, let's say 25 pixels. And let's see if it worked. Oh, maybe our file's not linked yet. So let's go back here. Yeah, product. Let's see. Dash lot. Product condent import dot product condensed D E N S E D dot C S S product condensed um, A. I said margin right. Did it not save? What's going on? Oh, it didn't save. There we go. Okay. So that's looking good. Maybe it's a little bit too far, but it's fine for now. So uh, what, these don't do anything now, of course, and neither do these buttons, but that's okay. Things are looking good. So what we've done here is we refactored our layout a little bit to have um, three items here and then a wish list here. And the idea is when we're all done, when I click this, it's going to turn to a remove button, and it's going to add it to the list. Uh, and vice versa, if I add it, it'll go here, or if I remove it, it'll come off. And if I click these, it'll also come off. Uh, but currently, our components aren't talking to each other. And you maybe would think that, oh, this should be fairly easy. I mean, we're almost there. But the reality is we're, no, we're not quite there. we got a quite a bit more to do uh, because we need to get components talking to each other without being interlinked to each other because once you interlink things um, you have to do one is you have to do more work and two is your components become unre unreusable and you're going to be more prone to errors and bugs uh, and so we need to create the proper structure for our, our services and our app so it can be scalable so let's call this video done uh, we got a lot more to do mark price at devslopes.com let's move forward <laughs>